to share and we also want to hear from you. So first few minutes, it will be nice to hear how you are last, last month since we last met, how was your time and any observations, anything you want to share, you know, please type and uh, it will be good for us to hear your experiences. I will, sh I will speak, but also it will be good to hear from you. Well, we have one BBC correspondent you know, by name Mark Daly. Many might have heard of him. And in one of his um, weekly event, he calls it something understood. He was talking about conviction. He said, opposite of conviction, the word, what is the word opposite of conviction? He says, opposite is not doubt, but faith. And next sentence he said, faith means doubt. There is an element of doubt in it. Then we use the word faith. And conviction is a different energy. Word nishche is used for when you are sure, you are convinced, clear, then it is nishche. As an example, say right now you are in front of the whatever computer or there is a table in front of you. You won't use the word, I have faith that there is a table in front of you. You won't use that word faith. You will say, I know there is a table there. But you might use the word your faith in some other area where there is some doubt. Baba uses the word nishchay. In Hindi, there is another word, Shruddha. And that is the word used in bhakti. And I have Shruddha in God and that kind of uh, you know, attitude, which is appropriate in bhakti. But in the Gita, there is a word Nishchay. Gita doesn't say Shruddha, Nishchay. Certain, sure. Because progress will happen, and Baba's style of progress, it can happen only with the energy of Nishchay, being certain. <clears throat> I was going to read just a line from today's blessing. Who remembers the words from today's blessings? The words used with divya intellect, divine intellect, and smriti. At the confluence age, all the children have received a lift of the divine intellect. With this lift, you can reach anywhere in the three worlds when you wish. Just turn on the switch of Smriti. In other words, waking up is required. And then you will reach whatever you choose in a second. You will be able to experience whatever region you want for however long you want.
with authority apply this lift in your task and then you will become easy yogi the labor will finish our effort can be difficult effort labor it can be easy effort if we use stone intellect then it is a difficult raj yoga it is like using a microscope to see the moons of the jupiter if you use the right instrument then you can see anything you can do anything even most complicated operation can be done very easily if you have the right instrument that's what happens it is not surgeons are clever but the instruments are clever so here baba is giving this insight there is this divine intellect it is a big lift and you can achieve many things in a in a second it also means there is other intellects people use and they are wrong instruments for this task so let us see it is what is this divine intellect and how to understand this so i will use the board and it is useful for us to come back to our basic sketch the way baba sees our reality if anyone uses divine intellect he is seeing this reality in a obvious way he understands we all are immortal people of light we all belong to this great family this is a world of silent celebration world of disbelief where their natural life is sudden bliss silent peace everyone lovely everyone loving forever because they all know they are immortal they need nothing they are beyond harm this is the life of everyone world of the family and father if they are using the divine intellect divya buddhi this is what they see it is not a knowledge they are seeing this each one is beyond harm they also see very clearly there is a temporary world here temporary it is obvious whatever it is it is temporary they know it there is a exit 
it is a bit like you may go to a museum, you know there is an exit. So they are not, not deceived into thinking it is, they can establish themselves in that museum. They may see it as a, as a theater, sure. That is the divine intellect. Let us see the scale of our confusion. When we are not using the divine intellect, and when we start using stone intellect, scale of our confusion, if there is a museum and you can't you can't take anything from there you can just visit that museum for half an hour and come out you have the right attitude to create even the slightest attachment is a confusion if it is a theater even children don't create attachments in a in a film. They watch a film, they don't create attachments in the film. Just see here what we have done. We say here is a temporary world. It doesn't need a huge evidence. It is something that is so obvious for us. Temporary world. Anything temporary, whether you call it a museum or a film, it is the same thing. You know, because it is temporary, you come out of it, you just can watch it. So here is a world we are seeing temporarily. We know there's an exit. And at present, see the attitude of people and also our attitude. We believe in a, in a very serious way that we own things here. We use the word my. We define ourselves based on things here. We create ego based on things. When, just like that museum, it has nothing to do. You can't even create a, even a desire in it. It is not mine. And here we go into such delusion. When Baba calls ego, ego, body consciousness, drop these attachments, see the scale of our delusion, attachments, ego, body consciousness, all these different words. Stone intellect thinks it is all normal. That is what the stone intellect is. It sort of doesn't even see this theater as a theater. It believes this is your life and this is your world and this is you. That is the basic positioning. And now let us do the progress. Let us think how we can progress. That is the starting position of. And in that position, we can be making spiritual effort also. So the effort starts with patthar. Starting position is, then definitely it will be a difficult effort. It will be labor. You know, all the time, Mara says, forget, have detachment, remember the father, but your ego doesn't want to remember father. Your ego doesn't want to be soul conscious. If ego allows soul consciousness to take over, then ego has to die. So we are in this big trap of the patta keeping us in that box and it becomes like a, a little bit handicapped effort. A limping along in a spiritual journey. 
but we have the option. An option, today's word. These words are synonymous. Baba using the words uh, divine. Today, Baba used the word divya buddhi, divine intellect. Another time, paras intellect. Paras intellect includes divine intellect, it includes broad intellect, it includes subtle intellect. That's why Paras is a broader word than divine, Divya. So when you are using the Divya Buddha, now game is, game is different. Divya Buddhi, you start, you start from this. It gives you the option of the bigger map. You at least understand the story as story. Paras means that you are seeing things with different eyes. You want to say anything? We add anything? Any comments? Yes, there are some comments. Um, remembering, uh, Ramon was saying it's important to remember about karmatit, to be free from my, and um, question. I guess with a self, how much are you attracted to Maya? And uh, another comment from Israel, it is time of accumulation and observing the thoughts that are created on the basis of the story and bringing the truth to the mind and feeling the calmness of the mind. There is also a question uh, on the subject of Nishje that came from Felisa. Shall I read it now? Mm -hmm. She says, it seems I've passed the Nishje, the feeling of being sure, and that now there's like a neutral zone, but not always getting the feeling of intoxication of the Nasha of flying. And now having knowledge, but can sometimes not um, not sure about if it's good karma. Uh, we know we can have, make good karma by being loveful and in a state of smriti and awareness, but can it be, it's not always with the external intoxication. So is this neutral karma? What is this state of mind? Sure. And we will address this as we go along at the end of the day today. You know, come back if they are not answered. Uh, this particular question. There is, um, yes, yeah, thank you. There are some other questions coming. What does um, the spiritual effort of ego look like? Spiritual effort of ego, yes. It is like trying to make Prashant spiritual. Ego is very much, you know, its positioning is here, story. And uh, your ego is projected largely on the character, role, and the story. So instead of helping the soul wake up, you know, Paras effort is that getting the soul wake up, and soul is spiritual. Or the only the soul can be have a spirit, but uh, ego based effort. Ego is incapable of going beyond understanding in a serious way the soul. So ego is so focused on pressure. And ego wants to, in the past, ego wanted to see that Prashant gets a bigger head, Prashant is getting uh, in a little more praise, 
you know, to a bigger position. That is the ego. And now he comes to a spiritual organization. He says, now Prashant has to become in a soul conscious. Prashant has to be more spiritual. It is focused on the role. It is a twisted. The whole thing is twisted. He wants to help Prashant come to golden age. That is the ego-based effort. Now let us come to... Is that right, um, Sarah? You wanted to say something? Anything more? That's, that's clear, yes. Um, I don't know if Ramon wants to add any, um, uh, Sanjay might want to add something. Um, there is another question. Is the stone intellect evolving to divine intellect or are they separate entities? Completely separate and good for us, good, good question. You know, just like uh, if I work with stone intellect, it only becomes more stone. That in black becomes stronger. We have to, as if, take a jump and start with uh, paras. And I will use the word paras. Uh, Baba uses the word paras in connection with stone intellect. So start with paras and then game is different in a second. Paras is seeing it in a different way. Paras is experiencing things from beyond. And then Paras will become stronger. Our aim is that way. You want to add anything? No, that's good. There's a, there's a thank you for that. It's a relief to see that they're completely separate and um, it's a stone intellect thinking that we need to refine at that level. So it's a, coming back to that jump. It's clear. Thank you. So let us create some, some time where we play with this. So we use the Paris intellect right now. And uh, in one second, we are seeing the whole physical world as a story. <clears throat> Nishchai, in this case, means there is no confusion. Is it story? Is it not a story? Yes, no. It is clear. It's a story. Every episode has an end. It's a theater. Drama is based on the story. Sure. There is no intention to get caught in the story. With Paras, we are able to see beyond the story. To understand this is a story, it is big shift. It is not a just a casual state. If I understood this, then it is it is radical. It means there's nothing to complain, and there is no reason for trauma. Many many things might have happened in the past. There's nothing to analyze and nothing to write a history on. That is the script. 
don't don't look for logic in a story that's why nothing to be obsessed about nothing to worry about in a story no one creates attachments in a story no one creates ego in a story all these are signs of stone intellect patthar the extreme delusion to create any level of bondage we are able to step behind behind the story in the real world for paras this dimension is subtle and normal it is different to the story it is subtle it is timeless and it is divya divine why we use the word divine no ravan no ravan's energy in any form the desire disappointment free from that that's why world of disbelief where the region is a region of bliss and love and contentment and celebration forever world of god everything is good and everyone is good forever this environment this paras environment helps the soul just like patthar environment stone intellect helps the ego makes the ego stronger favors the ego in different way just a justification of ego becomes appears normal in a stone intellect patthar environment paras environment favors the soul but the important milestone soul becomes conscious then only it is soul based effort soul becomes conscious and it is a perspective from the soul until then it is only ego based effort there is no other option soul becoming conscious he sees that invisible presence and understands his immortality for him is he belonging to the sky is normal he being that presence is normal he being completely free from that story appears normal He not needing anything anywhere it appears normal like a prince soul that is conscious he is the invisible prince invisible presence 
he also knows that everyone is like him. He knows all are from this home. All are lovely and all are good. It's a sweet bond with uh, all the souls. region is is supreme region for the one with paras every aspect is obvious this is the way god sees As he continues his journey in the sky and on earth, his soul remains the invisible guest. He remains the invisible actor in that drama, not the character, invisible actor. He remains the invisible traveler he remains the observer forever. He knows of his home. He is aware of his celestial truth. The only step that he has taken, use the right intellect. Thank you. So in this blessing that we read, we ref touched the subject of the intellect and the other word that is used in that blessing Smriti. Turn on the switch of Smriti. And we retranslate it as wake up. Smriti in this context. Soul, let the soul wake up. Baba uses the word Smriti Swarup. Translation can be embodiment of awareness, but it applies to the soul that is alive, that is awake. He sees in an obvious way. He is a soul. Soul is like a big thing to understand your soul. God is soul. And he understands the wonder of this reality of the soul. Knows his life with God, his life with other souls, his freedom. Nothing in the story anywhere can harm him. Immortal means this. Beyond harm. So that is Smriti. So Baba says, turn on the switch of the Smriti. Become conscious. Then the game, okay, it is for, for one second. Not a long, long twisted route. It is twisted if I am trying to make the ego spiritual, if you are trying to make 
the role, drama, if it is patthar effort, it is difficult. But take a jump. Start from the, start with the right instrument. And then turn on the switch. And the perspective is from the soul. In this, there is still difficulty will come. And difficulty is from the ego that are created over all these years. They will pull you back in the story. And that is why the question, one question was, I have a I have done it in the past. Why the intoxication is less? And it is because Nishche is there, but ego wants to survive. So instead of being in the smriti of the soul, that is turned off, that switch gets turned off and you come in the ego. And in that confusion, you start to make effort from the ego. And ego is not going to have intoxication of the sky. Ego will have intoxication if things are going well in the drama. It can be service, service going well and something is going nice and can be logic or alokic even. But it is based on the drama. Then you know it is ego-based happiness. But we will be clever if we continue to create this paras environment, reminders, and promote, promote nourishment for the soul. It all of that favors the soul. But uh, looking out for that very clear milestone where the soul, that invisible soul is traveling, invisible soul, is dealing with this world. Right now, Prashant is talking. But Prashant is, this is all stunt going on in the drama. In a, the real effort required is, is the soul alive? Or is it all shut down? Is the switch on or off? This is what we have to check. Anyone want to say anything? Yes, um, there have been some comments and questions. Something from Belinda. It seems that we use the words soul consciousness, but we don't fully separate the soul from the role. And so we stay <clears throat> in confusion. Um, one question. When there is understanding of the drama, but regret with pain appears at the same time, can it be a delusion of the ego, of repentance? Uh, do you mind to repeat the question again? Yes. When there is an understanding of the drama, but regret with pain appears at the same time, can it be a delusion of the ego of repentance? Yes, if the drama is creating any kind of feeling, it is only from the ego. And, not, and, yeah, and, not, and we have to go through that maybe sometimes. If the ego is created, then some settlement has to happen. So just to clarify uh, one thing you were saying about drama-based happiness, when things are going on well in the drama, it is true the soul feels happy. Is that ego-based happiness? Yes. You know, if uh, the story matters for me, you know, ordinarily we are very much 
you know, they, with the knowledge and all, we are very much in the story. And we have to give the contrast. This um, Baba is using today, Paras intellect, divine intellect. If we are to use that, then this physical world will literally appear to you like a, like a side scene that is happening. There is in your city, there are some theaters and something going on, you know, some film going on. How much is your happiness based on what is happening in that film? That is going on, something is going on there, you know, but your life is something very different. Paris is like that. When you are using Paris and if the switch of Smriti is turned on, the soul, you know, his happiness is based on something different. That allokic, if we can use that word, allokic, for, for this unearthly reality, beyond the, beyond the story. And so that is very emerged for one who is Paris. Very important. He knows of his family of souls. He knows of his and a wonder. Everyone is good and everyone is safe and everyone is, is immensely lovely. The wonder, that, that is the real wonder. And, uh, and the happiness is from that reality. Life with the God and loved by God. So when we hear in the Mudli, remember me, remember me, that would be the natural life of one who is Paris. Because he is not remembering God as a bhakti sort of uh, system, but he feels this is the natural, you know, that these are the there's a big prize. He got the ultimate prize here. Life with God and the wisest and the highest, the holiest. And uh, the souls of family, of souls, all are good. So your attention is at that level. And in the story, something is going on. You know, something goes up and something goes down and something goes around. He is not himself going up and down because of the story. That is Paris. There are some um, questions around the, the, the separation. So the soul is playing the role, how to separate the two? Sure. You know, the Paris is very important uh, because Patar creates confusion. But take an example. Sometimes we give this example. Say, you know, let me take an example here. There is Rini. Uh, Rini is with us. Is it Rini? I think from California. No, different. Different, okay. So if, let us say Rini is acting in a drama, children's drama, and uh, she is playing the part of a camel. And uh, it is a 10 minute drama. She is playing the part and the drama finishes as she goes home. Someone else is playing the part of the elephant. and someone else is playing the part of the dragon. So drama is going on. For Rini, she doesn't think she's a camel. She knows she is Rini. She is, even when she is on the stage, everyone sees just camel. She knows she is Rini. This is just a camel for 10 minutes, just putting on a mask and acting as a camel. And then she goes home as Rini. It is an extreme confusion to think that I am the camel. 
And that's why that dotted blue line is shown that you have lost the clarity. And just don't interact, you know, it creates complete, you know, that world of camel becomes your world. And you are camel, no question at all. You become the camel. So this is what has happened when we have crossed the line and when we are stone intellect. We start with Paras, we see a very clear difference between the Rini and the camel, and then go through the drama. It may be for one minute, it may be for half a minute. We start with that, but see very clear distinction between the story and the real world. We have to be so sure about this. We have to, I like these questions and all, because these questions help us to get the nishchay. Any aspect, anything, there is the slightest doubt, discuss, reflect on it, ask question, experience, experiment, until you are so clear. And then there will be victory. Not enough to have faith. And if the reason I'm you know, taking a position against faith, because you may start with a position of faith today, down the line after one week, one month, Maya will bring some doubt. And if the foundation of Nishchai is not there, then there will be defeat. So if the foundation is very strong, there is no room for doubt. Another question. You said always create a parous environment, but also promote the nourishment for the soul. What would be the nourishment? Yeah, yeah, Paris environment is the nourishment. You know, just like in a certain season, daffodils come out. But another season promotes weeds, cactus, something else comes out. In another, one weather promotes good harvest. Another um, season doesn't bring the harvest. Here you are creating the Paris environment that favors the soul. Soul becomes alive and conscious. There's a question. Um, without a body, can the soul experience this fullness in this world of silence? Or do we need a body for experiencing any feeling, even if it is a body of light in the subtle region? Yeah, we may need the body and the brain, you know, necessary, maybe. And that's why seed stage experience happens here. When we are actually in the home, there may not be emerged experience. Things get merged, you know, but uh, that is the way it is. Even for Baba, when he comes here, everything is emerged. You are right, gross or subtle, body is necessary. Thank you. Um... Another question around ego. If I consider myself a very powerful Brahmin, very soul conscious, is that ego based? Am I identifying to the role of the Brahmin but still in ego? Yes, very much. So, soul is, you know, is eternal. What you are, you remain forever. You are not defining yourselves based on anything from the story. Then it is soul awareness. In the drama, the, like you know, Prashant, you know, many things associated with Prashant are there. 
you know, they are temporary. Even Prashant may be there, but Prashant's, um, everything can change. You know, he may not have certain skills that he has today. You know, body will change, appearance will change, and it, it will disappear also. So the conscious soul doesn't define himself based on anything. He eternally knows, he knows what he is eternally. It may be related to what you just shared, but in the context of needing a body, the question that's come, how is it for God this experience we just discussed about having a body and not having a body. And for God, same same thing applies to God. If he's in the soul world, the same principle applies. It is a soul in the soul world. In its own time, you know, he finds himself in the drama. Just like other souls come in the drama and then part starts. And once he is in the drama, the part emerges. Awareness comes and uh, then the part emerges. Just like with any other soul. Just that his part is alakic. It is supreme part. Even he comes to know of the cycle and uh, once he comes in the drama. Subject of God, when God is in the soul world, can he hear the sound of the worshippers? No. <laughs> Sometimes metaphorical, Baba may use certain language metaphorically, but um, only when any soul, only when they arrive in the drama, the experience happens. There is a question from uh, Jarina. Are there people who have reached the higher consciousness and how many of them are here on our planet? Um, second part. Uh, how many are of them are here? If how many yes, have yes. Yeah, yeah. How many of them are here on the planet? We never know, and we can never know. Uh, I and I myself don't want to go into that. You know, it is a bit like a speculation. One thing uh, that is relevant for us, from where I am today, how can I? come out of this mess, come out of this bondage and uh, become free and uh, take the next step and, uh, and get a very clear destination for myself. And from there, I will know more things but the next step would be the most important thing. Yes, thank you. Um, Snehal had a question and um, you sort of answered it partly, but if you could just say a little bit more about this separation, how the story um, would run if we remain in the background because to run a story some sort of involvement is required so you touched on this a bit with the camel and elephant but is there anything else you'd like to add to that sure sure you know we give this example Rini is acting in a drama she doesn't need to think she's a camel to act in a drama she's very much involved you know, she's playing the part and she is, uh, everyone likes the drama, everyone is amused. 
she is remaining sensible that is the difference she is not going into the confusion anybody going into confusion doesn't help anyone it don't, it don't help the drama either the actor has to remain sensible and the actor has to remain in clarity that helps everyone so involvement is one thing and being confused is another thing we don't want people to get confused does that help snehal want to add anything more this dotted blue line is a line of ignorance it is like a person is confused he thinks he is a camel that is uh, in a extreme delusion so our drama will be much better if actors were not in such a delusion so maybe shneha can also type um what about trauma is that also ego based yes um in the drama uh, camel comes camel goes dragon comes dragon goes dragon is uh, creating fire and then goes mouse comes mouse goes everyone uh, is amused by the whole thing even those who are acting as a camel and dragon they all are amused and they all enter entertain themselves they go home only in confusion we take trauma you know when we create ego and attachments then the mouse comes there's trauma mouse goes also trauma we don't even need dragon to create trauma Okay. If Amra wants to add anything, feel free. Um, a couple of questions. I'll uh, read them both because they're quite similar. Uh, maybe you'd like to take them together. Why does Paris intellect work intermittently, and what switches it off? And in spite of knowing the drama, why do we still fall in spite of knowing it's wrong? Some practical advice would be helpful. and the reason it is intermittent even intermittent to be good at, at the moment paras is almost non existent in practice it is there but it is atrophied which means weak if the muscles are not used they remain weak paras is not used for a very long time in the ravan's kingdom so it is very weak and we have to start using it a one for the spy one minute half a minute we start using it and that becomes stronger and we want to make it natural more we use it it will become stronger that is like a guaranteed baba is called parasnath lord paras in the murlis baba calls lakshmi narayan parasnath because that is natural that has become natural just a final um couple of questions maybe before the break um about god um you mentioned earlier god doesn't um hear the the calls when he's in the soul world so just to clarify he doesn't um hear our thoughts and feelings when he's in the soul world and at this point where is god is he in the subtle region using the subtle body of brahma from the confluence age Uh, when the confluence starts then babas shri babas part starts and uh, it is in the physical level subtle region yes so that 
that's kind of the main um, the questions at this stage. Um, Let us create one more minute of silence. And after that, we make uh, rooms and uh, we meet again after 10 minutes. And let us come to that essence. There's the expansion, which is necessary, understanding the knowledge, even different practices of yoga also. But within that, catch hold of this one essence and repeatedly come back to this also, not just by the program, but repeatedly, even for a minute, half a minute, come back to this in an absolute way. During that minute, go fully into experience. And what we are doing here, we are using the best intellect and understand all drama is at a distance, story. And aware of the home and souls and father, aware of the wonder of, of this truth. But the focus is on the invisible presence, soul, in that expanse of light, knowing that this is timeless, that this is all that matters. In this minute, he doesn't need to go into any other thoughts. So we can go into groups, but it would be good to create maybe a focus, uh, some may like a question for reflection. They discuss the area in which aspect we need to pay attention in the field of nishchay, certainty. Is it there in every area or which area needs attention? And what are we going to do about that? So how to um, create the solid platform of being sure yes. about the knowledge and what, what helps in creating that? What is the... Um, asking the right questions. Yes. So invitation to join the rooms and there should be a coordinator in each group, but if there isn't an obvious coordinator, someone can make sure everyone gets a chance to speak and um, we'll meet back in around 10 minutes. Thank you.
Thank you. I'm going to um, invite Sanjay from Israel to come into sound and maybe Kamar also. And it'd uh, be nice to hear your reflections on what's come up today for you. And after that, we'll hear from Belinda from South Africa. Sanjay, I think I need to allow you to unmute. <laughs> So you might want to just try again. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. So some reflections from here about uh, this um, subject of um, Nietzsche, yes. Um, the thought is that you cannot prove Nietzsche until you do that jump. Like a small kid that was asked by his parent to jump into the pool without him knowing to swim, but he has this trust and confidence fully that whatever is going to happen is going to be safe. So from that perspective, embracing Nietzsche fully and have those minute to minute experiences that yes, this is the truth and it is felt as such. So to make it a habit to practice from now and then, and as was said, it is a muscle that is very weak through those 2,500 years of uh, being in Ravan's kingdom and now needs to be strengthened again. So to jump with this certainty that there is the safety net of God himself that it will work for you. And the gift is uh, as experienced here, yes. Lightness and you know, confusion and happiness is there waiting. This is experience from here and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. And um... Yes, Nehal has typed very beautifully said. It's very really helpful hearing from everyone on this subject. And um, we'll also hear from Belinda. I think you can unmute also. Uh, yes, hello. Thank you, Sarah. Um, it was an interesting um, discussion in our group, and um, uh, the importance of experience um, is one of the, the the key things to to bring that um, mischief, because when the soul is fully awake then it's, uh, the experience is normal. And, um, and when something is experienced to be normal, then anything outside of that is not normal or not natural. And that helps then in this separation um, between the role and the soul, that the role is something that is temporary and can be and can finish any time. So how can there be a Nietzsche for something that is um, uh, is definitely not permanent? And that includes the role and everything around the role. 
Um, but there was concern about how to integrate this when life is demanding and um, uh, then to fulfill those demands and still yet to keep the, um, the clarity so that we don't cross that line. And um, uh, one thing is, as we are often reminded, that it's just to check um, if the story is suddenly more than worth more than just a penny. Because there's nothing wrong with playing the role. It's the confusion that's the problem. So when this is clear that um, the awake soul comes into the story and there's that detached involvement, but there's no investment and there's no um, look for a return from that investment. It is just with that um, detachment. So the hands are doing the work, but the heart is with the home, with the father, <coughs> with the family. Thank you. I think that's helpful because a few of the questions have been around this detachment. But if the heart is in the home, it's more clear. Um, we can be here, but it's not where the happiness is coming from and the sense of self and um, that whole department of worthiness is not based on the role. Um, so welcome back to Prashan. A few more questions have come in, but maybe you would like to start with some practice. Yes. It is like a wonderful uh, privilege for us to understand this mind and uh, a, how versatile mind is. Just to be control, to be in charge of it. Right now, if you want, think of a cat the mind goes there and uh, experiences a cat. It is. It can go anywhere. When you created that time, see the soul in that world of light. We are talking about another region, another reality. And mind can go there and experience the uh, immortality of the soul. With, if there is concentration, then great fortune. But we, mind goes there. We are talking about another reality, and in a second we can go there. That's what is that blessing. You can take your mind and experience what you want within a second. Now, our, this is great and uh, one can use this mind to do some visualization, you know, some experience, see, something like this. That is ordinary. Our aim is to use the mind to experience truth. That is the uniqueness of uh, Baba's approach. There will be benefit if there is 
foundation of truth. In other words, right now we are into major delusion. Ravan is a product of delusion. Ego is delusion. Result of delusion. And so to pull ourselves out of this, we need truth, but then it has to be experienced through the mind. So right now we use all this, whether it is intellect and concentration, and we come to the true perspective, truth with the concentration. And you know, there one question that was used, that is life is so demanding. You know, there was one friend, if he said he couldn't create one minute, you know, but if he had a heart attack, then he was away for two weeks. You know, drama continues, nothing comes to halt. So here we give priority to the truth. Like that patient, he gave priority to his health, that's why he went to the hospital. In the here, our, the self, soul itself is unconscious. You know, he has to be taken to the hospital, soul needs attention. The priority has to be given. And so in one second we come to that supreme home that dimension behind the story. Just we are using this just for one minute, this experiment. Experience that sky. You may try this with eyes open, eyes closed. Just a expanse of light We see this world in gentle red color. Details are not relevant, but world of light. This is a world of complete silence. World of complete stillness. Timeless. Timeless, changeless. Endless. The home of the souls. The true home. The souls belong here. They are the living stars of this sky. Right now, if we hear any sound, any sound that we hear, including the sound of 
commentary. That sound is in the far away story. At the same time, we are experiencing the silence. Silence of the home. Thank you. There is a scientist in this uh, area, London area, Rupert Sheldrake. And one study he did is people sitting in the front row and someone is staring at different people. And he discovered that wherever you stare, they turn around and look at the person. And this, this phenomena was far more frequent than, than by chance. And many of us know, if you just think of someone, he thinks of you, that does have happen. If you are sending a text to someone, You you think of him or the person to receive, he thinks of you. So what is going on at that time? He, his explanation is that this mind actually goes and touches that other person. You know, he uses the language, it is mind or consciousness or soul. There is a just like physically, if I was to touch someone, he would turn, turn around and look at me. In the same way, your thought actually goes there and touches the soul. That makes it fun. You know, that is what we are understanding here. This mind is like an amazing thing we got, not to be wasted. We can use it in the nice way. Let the angel use it. At the moment, ego is using it. That is the shift. And then once the angel is more stable, he can use it for service. Whoever you think, he will get blessing. It is a bit like that. Now, ego is bizarre. He can create many problems to himself and others also. Let us create one more, one more minute or a few minutes. And during this, and let us understand this almost like a procedure, steps, and follow that, experiment with it through the rest of the evening. First step for us is check that you are using the right intellect. That is the first step. With the virus, clearly understand the story. Prashant is part of the story. There is a script. And by that we also mean, I don't need to be so obsessed about the story. All this time I have been ignoring the real world completely ignoring. 
So Paras helps me to come beyond and now I'm seeing the real world. And real family of souls and their greatness and their immortality. For Paras, this is important and normal. People of light, that is normal. And the faraway story, that is normal. There are so many stories in this world. That is just one story. This is what we mean by Paris environment. And in this Paris environment, soul wakes up. So we are not seeing the soul now, the soul is seeing the world. That's the difference. For the awake soul, it is normal to be that presence and normal to be immortal. Normal to belong to that sky. Normal to be carefree and understands he needs nothing for his existence. And he's beyond harm. He understands complete freedom from everything. That's why naturally egoless and viceless. But also desireless, selfless. Awake soul is angelic. invisible presence he is also like an invisible prince who is loved by the king of kings he is aware of of this worthiness when it is coming from the soul it is not ego he knows everyone is good everyone is worthy and everyone is lucky. These are the feelings of the awake soul. He knows he is absolutely safe forever and lucky. We're talking about life with God, world of truth, world of immortality, world of love. That's why this is a region of disbelief. No reason for any, any desire even. And world of silent bliss and perfection. As he continues his journey in the sky, on earth. He understands truth is beautiful. The only caution is not to not to lose this truth. That's the caution. His, his intervention in this world is helping his brothers come back in truth, wake up to truth. He sees it as simple and, and it is simple. Switch, switch of Smriti.
from Shanti. Happy to take up some comments and let us we can hear comments. Questions? Yes. Um, it's a it's sort of a nice simple question. Um, what is the basis of Nishji? You know, we experience is a very powerful reason. Um, we often give the example of a eagle uh, who thought it was chicken, but this eagle flies, discovers the sky, then no one can convince the eagle that it is not an eagle. So experience is the ultimate. But our reason, rationality, different, we, we start with the working model and then it will grow. The eagle has to take a premise at some point that it is an eagle and then use the wings. But more it experiments, it discovers it is the eagle. Like that, taking a premise, it's quite sort of science language, objective. Um, another kind of related question, what are the signs of activated Paris Woody? As we were describing just now, that is very Paris, you know, one who sees from that side, that is Paris. And I'll tell you one nice experience with Baba. Someone, our Baba asked, what's the difference between yogi and one who practices yoga? And Baba's answer was, one who practices, one who is a yogi, he lives there and he comes here. And one who practices yoga, he lives here and goes there. So yogi, you know, the soul that is conscious, he is yogi, not a bodily image, you know, the soul, he lives there and he comes here. He feels he's a guest here. Maybe for five minutes, maybe for a hundred years, he, see, he feels he's a guest. He's that invisible traveler. Feels like that. Not just nice knowledge. Awake soul is very much for us. But when a person says, I'm from here, this is my house, this is my, 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 and uh, this is nice to practice, that will help my blood pressure, it will help my family. And then it is Pattar. He is practicing yoga. He is thinking, then it is ego based. He is thinking this body is me, I am senior now, it is all at that level. And if it is practice in a regard, it will help me in the drama. So that is Pattar. We, we all go through Pattar, Pattar effort, ego-based effort, but at some point we have to shift. The soul has to wake up. Thank you. Still got the image of the eagle and chicken, it's kind of helping some point he has to use the wings. Um, there are a couple of other questions on this subject, but also um, we can take them perhaps tomorrow because I'm aware of time. But there are a couple of questions that just wanted to clarify about um, the, ro the role of God, um, which we could maybe wrap up today. 
um, from the Spanish group, you mentioned that um, God's part starts when he comes into the physical world through Brahma, but it says in the Moli that his part starts in the Copper Age, giving visions to the devotees. Uh, question, who gives that those visions, or is it a fruit of karma, or is it God? I'd like to see that as, uh, you know, something, you know, at the confluence age, God sets the clock for the whole cycle. You know, so in golden age kings and deities and uh, copper age prophets, they all are created at the confluence age. And so also, you know, the visions and the whatever that happens at the bhakti level is all set at the confluence age. I like that model that that explains to me. Because Baba knows also, we also hear that Baba's incarnation happens at the confluence age. So the fruit of the the, the fruit of the karma is from now and that may come, it comes throughout the cycle, including the Copper Age. Yes. Okay, that's clear. If, any, if um, those who are wanting to clarify, feel free to type. So I know we've come to time. There's some very nice questions that maybe we could take tomorrow on Paris and Pata. It's um, probably... Um, nice to hold what's been helpful today. Is there anything you'd like to share finally, Vishant, or any reflections for the next 24 hours? And something we practiced in the last 10 minutes to create uh, often, create uh, the opportunity for ourselves more as fun to see this uh, mind and you know, how we can use our mind be it's such a wonderful toy we got but use it and let angel use it so to be in a little bit of a in this mode of let the angel come in in place quickly and angel use the mind and see the wonder the mind and its potential. So to follow that two steps, few steps to uh, in line with the blessing of today. Worth reading the blessing also. So we are emphasizing the value of intellect and turning the switch on. Excellent. So um, we'll maybe close here and um, create those opportunities. Um, I like the word enjoying, to create time to enjoy. Of course, ego wants to do other things, but um, to place the mind there and have the discipline at uh, different times and uh, making a note for um, any questions or realizations. So really appreciate everyone's creating uh, time today. We'll send a copy of the recording uh, to everyone. Um, so we'll meet again tomorrow. Thank you.